friends, Nibs again. Out here in the garage, a little bit of goofing around tonight, and uh, <clears throat> I was looking over some uh, projects I had over on the other side of the garage here, uh, and I realized I hadn't done a, a follow-up uh, kind of review on this repair that I did. Uh, I did a pretty in-depth uh, three-part series on how to tear this thing down, do some re uh, restoration, not really restoration, but some conservation on the uh, metal and wood, and then uh, another video on how to put it back together. But uh, I never really did get to a, a shooting video for it, so I thought I'd uh, get that taken care of. This one is actually just a one that <clears throat> one of the fellas from the local gun shop brought in for me to uh, take a look at and fix up for him if need be. And uh, I got it shooting pretty good. And uh, We'll go ahead and take a look at it. It did t take a reseal kit, um, and it's holding there really good. Um, I'd had it sitting over across the garage here for a couple of weeks at least now, and it still had a pretty good amount of CO2 left in it. I did use that up and put a fresh one in here um, before I started up the video and did some testing with it. But uh, here's some numbers that I found with it. Uh, I ran it across the chronograph, just a couple shots just to see what it was doing and uh, it was averaging just over just over 500 feet per second so that's pretty darn good uh, for an old co2 gun like this uh, put the data right up here so you can see that uh, pretty pretty small spread but i only did three shots so not a big deal and then i did a couple of trigger pulls and uh, i knew uh, after playing with it i realized this thing had a really nice trigger but i didn't think it was going to be as good as what I found um, here's the uh, Lyman chronograph or Lyman trigger pull gauge in uh, one pound one ounce uh, average that's a pretty sweet trigger um, no wonder why I can shoot it so good but uh, well <clears throat> this is the old Crossman model 180 this is an older version so uh, if you get one that has the safety through the stock like this and then a stamped uh, trigger guard like this you have the older version and then the newer version actually has a uh, cast aluminum uh, Trigger guard with the safety down on the trigger guard So just to kind of differentiate between the newer ones and the older ones But uh, we'll go ahead and shoot it uh, this one the main reason I didn't shoot it before was it did not have a, a sight on it but uh, I actually uh, borrowed the sight off of one of my model 760s older version model 760s and it fit right on there and it's actually shooting pretty darn good with that so uh, almost no adjustments needed at all to get it right on on track so i'm going to go ahead and i've got these daisy uh, wad cutter <clears throat> pellets and we'll go ahead and shoot a group across the garage but i thought uh, it'd be a fun little I got to get these back over to the guy. I got four or five guns here that uh, I fixed up for him, and uh, I need to get them back to him so he can bring me some more so I can review those too. But uh, let's go ahead and shoot it. It is a uh, it's a small gun for sure. Be a good little gun for a, a starter, a starter for a small person, you know, a youth or a a lady or whatever. I'm not the hugest fan of CO2 guns, but uh, they're fun. They got their place. It's a shooting gun, that's for sure. And uh, 500 feet per 500 feet per second. That's that's enough to take care of a squirrel, rabbit across the yard or whatever. <laughs> Loaded up with some pointed pellets. You'll be 
be varminting like a big dog. <laughs> There you go. Pretty darn good shooting little gun. Awesome trigger. Um, did uh, you, If you go back and look at uh, my videos where I did the, uh, especially part one, I showed pictures of the before of the, the wood and it, this thing looked like it needed to go in the garbage bin, not in the uh, repair bench, but uh, it turned out pretty good. I uh, did a little bit of brass wool on the metal. I didn't take off the patina but I just cleaned off the the rust scale that was on it and uh, it's got a really nice patina to it and then the uh, the stock is really nice so anyway there you go real quick one for you guys tonight but uh, I figured I'd get this Crossman 180 uh, one more hurrah before I send it on back to its owner and uh, it's a lot of fun these can be had pretty cheap on uh, on eBay if you can go on there and find one. And then if you need a seal kit, you can go to Henry Ford, uh, CrossmanRepair.com, Crossman600Repair.com, sorry. Uh, and he has the uh, seal kits for all these old Crossmans. You can get just any seal kit you need for just about anything that Crossman ever made. I think, I think pretty much everything Crossman ever made. Um, <clears throat> and if you don't feel... Uh, up to the task you can send it into him and he'll take care of it for you too so uh, he's got one coming back that he uh, re re repaired for me that I, I just couldn't get it solved my old 600 it just was jamming up and stuff and he said he's uh, got it timed up real nice and shooting real nice so should have that back in in my hands and in the next few days I think um, <clears throat> he text me over the weekend and said it was done and on its way back so hopefully I'll see it pretty soon and we'll get another video up on that but anyway hope you liked the video appreciate everybody being on the channel the channel is growing awesome uh, went over 3,500 subscribers I just can't believe how many people are on the channel now so it's really cool but I really appreciate everybody being here till next time have a great day <laughs>